Gallagher again, an independent review into the Mental Health Act has called for patients to be given improved rights and greater control over their treatment. The Act deals with patients who are detained in hospital every year. About 1.8 million patients receive mental health treatment, but only one in 20 of these is treated in hospital. In nearly, I should say in 2017 rather, nearly 50,000 people were detained in the UK. Black people are four times more likely to be detained than white people and it costs £18,000 on average to detain one person. The 18-month review recommended a number of changes including new rights for patients to legally challenge their treatment, more frequent opportunities to challenge detention, legally binding advanced care plans so patients could express how they wanted to be treated if they were sectioned, a requirement for doctors to record when and why they chose to ignore patients' requests. An end to police cells being used as a place of safety and less frequent use of police cars to transport patients. The right to choose a nominated person to have control of a patient's care if they were sectioned. At the moment, it automatically goes to their nearest relative. Well, Ray Waddingham from Hearing Voices Network is in Leicestershire and is joining us now. Hello to you. Thanks for joining us on the programme this afternoon. Your interpretation of these findings, first of all. Um, I think they're a step forward, but unfortunately they're a very tentative and timid step forward and fall way short of what um, me as someone who could be subject to the Act and our membership at Hearing Voices Network really demand. You say, uh, or certainly the report's suggesting, uh, improved rights. Uh, where would they start? Well, based on um, an event that we held with our members and a survey that we conducted, what people connected with our network really demand is a rights-based approach to mental health care. It's ridiculous that in this day and age, our wishes about our treatment can be overridden by mental health professionals. When we're making that with capacity, that happens in no other fields of healthcare. Um, the people subject to the act, you can call us mental health patients, that almost dehumanises us. Actually, we're your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your aunts, your colleagues, and we have a right to make choices. Um, unfortunately, the act, whilst it says that it will try to respect our choices, this review attempts to go a little bit further, it falls short of putting it in law that we can make advanced decisions that will be um, respected. It also fails to, dis to address institutional racism, institutional abuse and the harms that are committed whilst people are in hospital. It frames it more as an individual issue by sort of isolated members of staff rather than a systemic um, institutional issue that needs to be addressed by the government so it's something and it's made with good intentions and good hearts but it's not the bold and radical change that we really need in 2018. Do you have personal experience that you can share with our viewers to explain where you're coming from? Yeah sure so I'm diagnosed with schizophrenia which you can probably hear my baby in the background there um, <laughs> that I was re-diagnosed with when I had a baby. Um, I was sec I've been sectioned many times and it's hard to explain what sectioning means, but one of the reasons I developed this thing that people call schizophrenia is that I was subject to childhood trauma outside of the family. And then to be taken into hospital, held down, injected, be unable to leave and have my human rights just ripped from me just was re-traumatising and so many of us in mental health settings um, have gone through trauma or racism or other forms of injustice and it seems crazy that the system that's there to protect and support us actually just further piles trauma on top of this. Is the baby alright? It seems it sh baby seems happy and healthy but everything okay there? Okay here, happy and healthy? Yeah. Oh, that's um, good, that's good. I, I, wanted, I, just, I just wondered if the baby needed attention, but let's, let's uh, press uh, on, should we? No, um, I've got a friend with her, luckily. Ah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, do you feel that you were always in a position to be able to make informed choices, though, during every stage of your treatment? I think there have been times, and we say this in our report, that 
I've needed short, and I mean really short term detention, when I have wanted to kill myself and have been so overwhelmed that it's very hard to to reason with me. But I think looking at that misses the bigger picture. Prior to that, I was able to make choices and say which medication I would or would not want. Um, that that can be ignored at the point of detention makes no sense. Um, also, longer term sections that I've been subject to have not been helpful. Long after the crisis has happened, um, there's been many, many times when I've been able to, to reason with people, to talk, that I've been willing to um, stay in hospital and be supported, yet I've still been under a section. And even before that, if there was actually services that were responsive, supportive, that I didn't try to run away from, I wouldn't have needed sectioning in the first place. I could have reached out for help. And that's something we hear at the Hearing Voices Network again and again, people being turned away from support when they need it, or the support being so unsuitable or terrifying that they don't feel able to reach out for help. So thinking about whether I've been able to make decisions or needed sectioning, it misses the bigger issue. Yeah, but the report is suggesting that patients should be able to uh, make an appeal at tribunal to uh, discuss uh, what sort of care they should receive. Let's see what happens in the fullness of time as far as that's concerned. But on a more general level, what would your advice be to people who are struggling with their mental wellness and they feel that they don't have anywhere to turn? What do they do? I think Reaching out is always a good idea, but it's who you reach out to. There's a number of voluntary sector organisations out there that will listen. Um, you've got the Hearing Voices Network, you have Samaritans, um, lots of local mind associations that will be there with you and help you work out how to get the support that you need. Um, if in doubt, obviously, people can contact the GP, but I think having the extra support of advocacy services and the voluntary sector can help you navigate the system that you might be scared of. How's the baby? How is it being a mum? It's great. She's about nine months old now. Um, unfortunately, I've gone back into services after her birth, so it's it's been quite challenging, but she's thriving and, yeah, being a mum is... Is she walking yet? No words. Is she walking what yet? Oh, she's kind of um, walking with hands and crawling backwards, which is just fantastic. Yeah, you wait until she is. There's no going back after that. It's good <laughs> to talk to you, Ray. Thanks very much indeed for joining us Thank on the programme this afternoon. Thank you. Crossing over to Sky Sports Centre now for an update with Nick.